Hey folks, so it is cold out. Um, I think it's like 38 degrees. It's pretty chilly out here and uh, the wind's blowing just a little, makes it feel colder even. Um, so Lee is busy working in my um, herb beds. Um, they needed a little uh, straightening up. The sides were bowing out just a little bit. So he is uh, working in there. We'll go over there in a minute. Uh, but um, I just wanted to get out here by the woods and say we are not walking in the woods today. <laughs> so um, it's, it's kind of cold and windy and we've uh, been out there. There's really nothing out there that we haven't already shown you in the last uh, couple of walk in the woods. Um, pretty soon should be, we're going to have about a week of cold and then it's going to start warming up again. And then we should start seeing, uh, some other things, especially some more mushrooms. Uh, we've been watching for some more, uh, oyster mushrooms or dried saddles to start. Uh, won't be long before, uh, more else will start coming in. Uh, so we'll be watching for all that. Um, but in the meantime, hmm, stretch this out but in the meantime <laughs> but in the meantime we will do a little foraging um i am actually helping teach a homeschool group class on survival and uh, last week and this week was foraging so um last week we took uh we made them a salad and uh, we we bought some lettuce and we put some um um dead nettle and wild onions and uh, violets and dandelions in their salad uh, just a little bit in with their salad and they didn't need a whole lot of salad uh, because if you're not used to that kind of stuff it can upset your stomach a little bit until you get used to it if you're used to eating that way you're good but these most of these kids have never ate that kind of stuff and we didn't want to give them very much to start out so we've been kind of showing them what you can eat out in your yard and out in the woods and uh, just a few things. Uh, it's a uh, preteen class and uh, I think they're, um, I, I can't remember, 9 to 13 maybe or something like that. And so we've just been kind of showing them that you can eat some of these things and some of these things are medicinal and uh, just kind of introducing them to uh, foraging. So um, this week, tomorrow, um, I will be doing, um, um, we're going to show them the difference in the dead nettle and the hen bit. And both are edible, so it's not a big deal if, if you get them mixed up. But the, uh, the dead nettle is more, uh, has more nutrition and medicinal properties where the hen bit, not quite as much. Um, and, uh, the hen bit, they say is a little bit, uh, a little bit of a laxative. So you don't want to do very much of that. So I try to, you know, stick with the dead nettle. Uh, but of course in a survival, this is a survival class and in survival, you can eat either one. So we're going to show that and show them the difference. And, um, I'm also going to do uh, a, a white pine needle tea for them and show them that and show them the difference on how to tell what pine it is. Now, you can use most any of the pines. There's just a couple that uh, you shouldn't use, and but most of them don't grow around here, uh, but maybe in your neck of the woods. But you can use most any of them. Uh, white pine is the most um, highest in vitamin C and and most uh, nutritional and uh, it has five needles on each bundle so that's the way to tell the white pine and that's the best one to use but you can also use um, uh, I have a video on this uh, from way back I'll tag that in the uh, uh, description or uh, or at the end of this video um, so, um, you can also use, oh, as I was saying, you can also use some of the, um, furs and, and, uh, 
you know, uh, ju junipers and different ones. You do not use the U. That's the main one that you should not use. It's not actually a pine anyway, but it's a U tree, Y-E-W, and that's definitely the one you do not want to use. So what I wanna show you today is, um, uh, and I could also show you the pine needles. Uh, I got, I've got some of them ready to show tomorrow. And uh, I wanna show the uh, dead nettle and the hen bit and show you how to tell the difference. Um, like I said, neither one is poisonous or toxic or anything. So it really doesn't, it would not hurt you to use either one in, uh, in, in food or, or uh, uh, I like to throw a little bit in a green smoothie or uh, um, scrambled eggs or a soup salad, whatever. You know, uh, you could also chop a little bit up on something like a taco or, or something like that, stir fry. Um, so, um, so I will show the difference. And it probably, if you if you have a choice, the dead nettle is is the better of the two as far as nutritional and medicinal. Uh, anyway, we'll show that, and uh, I'm gonna take you over and show you what Lee's doing, and um, and the pine needles. Okay, so first I'm going to show you some of these. Um, now these are right up by my porch in my front yard. So I will not eat these because we have too many animals running around to eat anything out of our, you know, close by our house in our yard. We have uh, chickens, dogs, cats, and uh, so they roam all over the place. So this being up by my porch, I would not eat these but I am gonna use them to show you what we're looking at here. So I'm gonna pick a few to show you first, and then we'll get some of the other. See if you can tell the difference. A lot of people already know the difference, but people do get them mixed up. So let's see, get a good, oop. Get a good little bunch of them here. So there you go. Here's some of the other, and this is out by my apple tree out in the front yard. So again, we will not eat these, but we're just using this to show you the difference. And sometimes they grow right beside each other or real close to each other. And um, it, I think it's easier to tell the difference if they're growing right beside each other, or if you have them beside each other, uh, when you pick them, it's easier to tell the difference. But there's some differences that you can easily pick up on after you learn them. Now the cat's gonna get in my way. But here are the others. All right, I'm gonna come out here and see what Lee's got going on in the herb gardens. I have some stuff ready to plant and he had to fix some of this. Now this first bed, was the uh, the first bed we done, and uh, it needed uh, dirt added to it. The rest of them are newer and didn't need any dirt, so he's putting fresh dirt in this one. So, what happened here is, well, let me show one that's still bowed. Okay, here's a good one. This third bed here, see how bowed that side is? The side's kind of bowed out from the weight. And he is uh, strengthening that up. So that's what he's going to do in each bed. We'll let him show you why the dogs has got to act up right now. I don't know, but they do. So this first bed, um, he's already fixed it. He's already strengthened the sides. He took wire and went from one side to the other and pulled it real tight to tighten that up. And that took that bow out, <laughs> these dogs. So that took that bow out of there. See that one's got a little bit of a bow on that side. So he straightened these up and strengthened that middle up with wire from one side to the other and then tightened that wire up real good and it pulled those sides back in. It's a something else video. Something else video. You don't know what we're going to show. I don't know what we're going to show next. So this uh, soil 
is some of that compost we got from the city. And uh, it is leaf mulch. And it is some wonderful stuff. This has really been some good stuff. Uh, first time we got mulch from them, we got, what was it called? Wood mulch. Wood mulch. Wood mulch. And it had a lot of big pieces and stuff in it. And uh, it was good. It was okay. It just had a lot of big pieces. But this we got for the beds. The bottom of this had the wood, wood mulch. And, um, and we didn't fill it up very full. And then we built the other beds. We filled them up full with the uh, leaf mulch. And they do amazing Okay, so I've got these in the house. <clears throat> I just spread them out here. So they're all mixed up. And uh, I'm going to show you that there is a big difference uh, between the dead nettle and the hen bit. If you want the more medicinal one, you're going to look for the dead nettle, which will be the one that has the thicker leaves up close to the top. All the leaves are closer to the top. The leaves are pointed. See how pointed those leaves are? I don't know if you can tell. I see the little pointed leaves. That is your dead nettle. Okay, and your hen bit is going to have leaves all the way down, spread it apart, the flowers are a little bit longer. It still has kind of a little bit of a fuzzy feel and uh, thick leaves, but do you see that the leaves are rounded? The leaves are kind of rounded instead of pointed. All right, now let's show them side by side and you will see a huge difference. <clears throat> Separate they look very much alike, but right beside each other, after I've told you some of the distinctive markers, you can really tell a difference. Dead nettle, all the leaves are towards the top and they are pointed. And hen bit, the leaves are separate all the way up the stem and the leaves are rounded. Both are in the mint family. Uh, both are good for you and just fine to eat. So get you some, chop them up in some uh, salad or scrambled eggs and get you some added nutrition in your food. Like I said, not gonna eat these cause they came out of my front yard. But for our uh, class tomorrow, I will be going down the road. There is a field that is not sprayed. It's an empty lot. I said field. There's an empty lot down the road that has tons of these all over it, both kinds. And uh, I'm going to go, uh, has not been sprayed with anything or anything like that. I'm going to go pick a bunch of it and uh, take to the class and show them the difference, and we will probably let them try some. We did chop up a little bit in their salad last week, but this week I'm gonna kind of maybe get them to just, you know, try a little bite. Um, we're not gonna do a salad. We're gonna do the uh, pine needle tea this week. So, uh, so there you go. Let's move that aside and work on the pine needles. Okay, I hope you can see the pine needles. We can't, okay, pine needles. Okay, these come out of our yard. This bunch here come out of our yard. And there they are. They're a little bit lighter color. And there are three needles to a bundle. This is a bundle. And there are three needles to a bundle. Okay, so I got interrupted and had to stop this video and come back a few hours later. So, back to where I was getting at, I showed you the uh, needles, pine needles that came out of our yard that have three needles to a bundle. 
So these are the ones that I got out at the church, close to our church, uh, on the little road going to our church. I had found these before that are white pine and they have five needles. Let's see if I can, well, okay. Let me try to spread them apart here. Anyway, I promise you there's five there. <laughs> Five needles to a bundle. These are white pine. Uh, they are actually shorter than the other ones. I don't know that that makes any difference. I just go by how many needles to a bundle. So the white pine has five needles to a bundle. There is five there, I promise. It's looking like four on there, but it's five. Uh, and then the uh, <clears throat> red pine has um, two needles to a bundle. And then the uh, yellow pine, like I said, has three, sometimes four, but the five is what you really wanna get. You can use the others, but the five is the best, most medicinal and best tasting. So there you go. I pulled a whole branch off. So uh, I am going to, uh, make tea out of this. This is the white pine. I'm going to make tea out of this for the class um, in the morning and uh, and explain to them the five needles. And I don't know if that shows up good. Anyway, no. no. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> there you go. That is um, how you tell them apart. So this is the three prong is the yellow pine and here beside it is the five prong white pine so let's see how much longer that is it's probably gosh that's probably double double the length of these if you boil them you don't want to boil them you want to pour hot water over them and let it steep if you boil them you will get that terpene, uh, uh, like turpentine. It's the terpene in them. You'll get that turpentine taste, and it will be nasty. So you don't want to boil them. You want to pour hot water over them and let it steep for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and uh, then use you a little uh, raw honey or something to sweeten it a little and, uh, and drink that down. And that will be good for colds and flus and uh, uh, lots of other things, lots of other ailments. Also, inflammation and things like that, too. Uh, lots of vitamin C. So, there you go. Give us a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and watch us on Thursday nights at 6 Central.